Vancouver. We have the history of Charles Lindbergh, of Leah Hing, of Dorothy Hester, of Lincoln Beachy, who Orville Wright said was the most wonderful flyer of all. An airplane in the hands of Beachy is poetry. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. In 1905, the dirigible gelatin landed at Fort Vancouver after it became the first aerial craft to cross the Columbia River. In 1911, a plane landed at Pearson Airfield for the first time, just eight short years after Orville and Wilbur Wright made their first flight at Kitty Hawk. Today is a very historic day for Pearson Field. Uh, we are receiving the AIAA designation from the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, in recognition of Pearson being the first airport in the Pacific Northwest and one of the oldest continuously operating airfields in the country. So for nearly 15 years AIAA has been identifying locations that are instrumental in aerospace history and currently there are over 60 historic sites and it was pointed out that uh, Pearson Field is now in very good company. Madrid, Spain uh, received it for Juan de la Siedba's invention of the autogyro. There is one in Washington DC on the National Mall in front of the Smithsonian as well as the uh, Johnson and Kennedy Space Centers. We do want to recognize facilities such as this that provide a beautiful example of the wonders of aerospace and um, what, what it really has brought to our lives. Here, the story spans uh, hundreds of years. Uh, many different peoples, many different cultures, many different countries. So it's really hard to say you know, what those top uh, events or activities were here. But I think one that ranks, that certainly ranks high, uh, would be the, uh, uh, the landing of the, uh, uh, of the Soviet aircraft. In 1937, Pearson Airfield made international headlines when three Russian aviators landed there after they completed the world's first nonstop transpolar flight. Pearson handles almost 50,000 operations a year and directly supports approximately 450 jobs in our community. According to the state of Washington, the combined economic impact from on-airport tenants and general aviation operations is estimated at almost $27 million a year. So this is a great day for us to get this kind of national recognition and to allow us to celebrate it. But also I think the big task ahead is how do we educate the public and do the outreach to tell the stories that make Pearson so significant. How do we let people know that this place is that important that they should care? And that will be the job of the National Park Service, our partners, the trust, and others to tell that story about Pearson Airfield.